This is a tutorial on solving equations. When we solve an algebraic equation, that means we're looking for the value of our variable. Or in this case, we're looking to find out what x is equal to. Now, to find out what x is equal to, we want to rearrange this equation here. So it looks like x is equal to something else. We want to get x alone or by itself on one side of the equal sign. So to do that, we have to look and see what's going on with x. Here, we're adding 5 to x. So to get x by itself, we would have to also subtract 5 because x plus 5 minus 5 would just be equal to x. So if we subtract 5, we'll get x by itself. But if we subtract 5 from one side of this equal sign, we have to subtract 5 from the other side of the equal sign. Imagine we had a simple expression that said 7 was equal to 7, and we subtracted 5 from one side, but we didn't subtract it from the other. Well, we'd end up with 2 is equal to 7, and that wouldn't make any sense. So if you ever do anything to one side of the equal sign, you have to do it to the other. So we subtracted 5 from our x plus 5, and these canceled, and we got left with x. But we have to take 10 and subtract 5 from it also. Well, 10 minus 5 is just 5. So here we've solved our algebraic equation. We found out that when x plus 5 is equal to 10, x has to equal 5. Let's try this again. Here we have y minus 3 is equal to 15. Well, we're trying to get y by itself, so this equation will look like y is equal to something else. Well, to get y by itself, we have y minus 3. To get rid of this minus 3, we just do the opposite, so we add 3. But if we add 3 to one side, we have to add 3 to the other side. So y minus 3 plus 3 is just y. And then 15 plus 3 is 18. So we found out that y is equal to 18. Now the same thing works for multiplication and division. Here we have 3x, or 3 times x, is equal to 18. And again, we're trying to get x alone on one side of the equal sign. So how do we get rid of x being multiplied by 3? How do we get rid of that 3? Well, we just do the opposite. So here we have 3 times x. And to get rid of this 3 times, we'll just divide by 3. So 3 times x divided by 3 would just be x. If I had 3 times 5, that would be equal to 15. And then if I divided by 5, I would just go back to my original 3. So 3 times x divided by 3 is just x. But if I divide by 3 on one side, you always have to do the same thing to the other side of the equal sign. So we have to divide this 18 by 3. Well, 18 divided by 3 is 6. So we found out that 3x equals to 18, x has to equal 6. Let's try this again. Here we have 3 fourths x is equal to 9. Now you could convert this 3 fourths into a decimal and you could make this say 0 0.75 which is 3 fourths times x is equal to 9 and then you could divide both sides by 0 0.75 because remember you have to do it to both sides and you'd find out that x is equal to 12. The other way to do this if you have 3 fourths x is equal to 9 is just to divide by 3 fourths. But dividing by fractions is hard, so we never do it. Instead of dividing by a fraction, we always multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal, if you don't remember, is just switching your numerator and denominator. So we would multiply by 4 thirds. Well, if we multiply one side by 4 thirds, we have to multiply the other side by 4 thirds. Now, these would cancel, and we would be left with x, 
and then 9 times 4 thirds again is just equal to 12. Now what if we have lots of things happening to x? Here in this equation we want to solve it for x but x is being multiplied by 2 and then we're also subtracting 5 from it. So how do we do this? Well we previously saw a problem with multiplication and then before that we saw problems with addition and subtraction. We would do each one of those in a single step. And which one you do first doesn't really matter. There is usually an easier way to do a problem. But if you don't do it the easy way on accident, it's not a big deal. So if I had 2x minus 5 is equal to 3, I could get rid of this 5 first. And to do that, we would add 5 to both sides. And these would cancel. And we'd get 2x left over because we haven't done anything with the 2 yet. And that's equal to 3 plus 5, so that would be 8. So now we have a new algebraic expression, but we still don't have x by itself. So there's a second step to this problem where we divide by 2 on both sides because we're trying to get rid of this multiplication of 2. So these would cancel, and we get x is equal to 8 divided by 2. Well, that's just 4. Let's say you hadn't done the 5 first. Say you wanted to do the 2 first. So here we again we have 2x minus 5 is equal to 3 and we wanted to do the 2 first. Well we can divide both sides by 2 and when you divide both sides by 2 you have to make sure you divide everything on both sides by 2. So we divide this by 2 but we'd also have to divide the minus 5 by 2 and then the 3, because that's the other side of the equation, gets divided by 2. So these would cancel, and we would get x almost left by itself. That's just a single x. But we'd be subtracting 5 halves, and that would be equal to 3 divided by 2, which is just 3 halves. Now, again, we're still trying to get x by itself. So we're subtracting 5 halves from x. So we would have to add 5 halves from x to get rid of that. But if we do that, we have to do it to both sides. So then these would cancel. And we'd get x is equal to 3 halves plus 5 halves. And then 3 halves plus 5 halves is just 8 halves. And then 8 divided by 2 is just, again, 4. So it doesn't matter which one you did first, if you took care of the 2 multiplication or the 5 subtraction, you still come out with the same answer as long as you follow your steps correctly. Let's look at our next equation. Here we have 3x plus 1 all divided by 4 is equal to 1. Well you could split the 3x and the 1 over the 4 but the easiest way to do this is to take care of this denominator first. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. And that's just our first step because these will cancel. And we'll get 3x plus 1, because that hasn't changed, is equal to 1 times 4. So that's just 4. Now again, we can do the multiplication of the 3 first or the addition of the 1 first. I like to do the addition first. So let's subtract 1 from both sides to get rid of this addition of 1. So what's left is a 3x and then 4 minus 1 is 3. And then our last step would be to divide by 3 on both sides. Because these will cancel and we'll get x is equal to 3 divided by 3, which is just 1. So as long as you step out your equations, just do what we've done before, and you should come to your answer. And that completes the tutorial on solving equations.